Welcome to worship. Hello, I'm Olive Fricky from Bismarck, North Dakota. Welcome to worship. and 100. Welcome to worship this week. We are continuing to find places of strength in the Bible. This week it's Joshua and uh, the crossing of the Jordan River. Again, welcome. Hi everyone. So today we're talking about Joshua and you might remember him from the story uh, about the walls of Jericho falling down where Joshua and other people are, they march around the city and they blow their horns and then the walls come down. But today we're here talking about Joshua before that happened. So this is actually right before him and the Israelite people are gonna cross into the promised land. And um, Joshua has become the new leader and he's kind of having a conversation with God, really a pep talk, if you will, from God. Um, you know, Joshua's probably feeling a little nervous. And God says to him, you know, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I think that's such a great thing for Joshua to hear then and for us to hear now that, you know, whatever bad things are happening or having a hard time, along with the good times, remember that God's with you through all of them. So this week, as you maybe do the faith five and bless one another, make that sign of the cross on each other's foreheads and say, God is with you and so am I. Have a good week.
Be strong and courageous, God says to Joshua at the beginning of the sixth book of the Old Testament. Be strong and courageous. There is a reason this verse is memorized more than any other verse of the book of Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Those words are inspiring. Those are words that we often need to hear, and yet some days those words sound a little too good to be true. I imagine they actually sounded too good to be true to Joshua. After all, Joshua had all sorts of challenges when God spoke those words to him. To begin with, Joshua is following in the footsteps of Moses. Moses led God's people for 40 plus years. He parted the Red Sea. He delivered the Ten Commandments. He walked the Hebrew people out of Egypt, out of slavery. Do you, do you know how many times Joshua would have heard? Moses never did that. Moses wouldn't have said this. Joshua heard Moses, 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 his entire ministry. Think about the burden he carried. In addition, Joshua has no idea what the future holds. You see, the Hebrew people have been in the wilderness for 40 years. They are about to enter into the promised land, which sounds exciting, but what is that going to look like? The Hebrew people want to know what what type of crops can we raise in the promised land? What, what's our government going to look like? What are we going to do about those fortified cities, Joshua? He doesn't have an answer to all these questions. He doesn't know what the future is going to hold. And last but not least, Joshua has to deal with the river. It's not the mighty Mississippi, but it's, it's the Jordan River. It's, it's not some creek that you might find in somebody's backyard. The Jordan River is the fastest flowing river in the region. And Joshua has to get all of God's people across this river, thousands of people. And remember, they've been in the wilderness, the desert, for 40 years. It's not like they were stopping at the Y taking swimming lessons, okay? They, they don't know how to doggy paddle. You've got to get thousands of people across a raging river. That's an incredible obstacle. When God speaks those words, be strong and courageous, Joshua is saying, probably thinking, I'd like to be, but it's easier said than done. My hunch is that when people hear these words today, be strong and courageous, that's exactly what you're thinking. Be strong, be courageous. I would like to, but how? How can I? Because because like Joshua, we're carrying burdens. You, you might not be replacing Moses as the leader of God's people, but in the past couple weeks, I've talked to people who are anxious about dying family members, people who are grieving the loss of loved ones, people who are nervous about local politics or who are scared about an upcoming trial in the Twin Cities or who have strong opinions about kids returning to school. There's all sorts of burdens people are carrying right now and they are different from person to person, but we're all carrying something. We want to be strong, we want to be courageous, but when you're carrying a burden, it's, it's pretty hard. Plus, plus, we have such an uncertain future. I, I wish we could say, here's what the world is going to look like a year from now. I wish we could say, this is what uh, we're going to be doing as a community six months from now. I wish we could say, this is what summer is going to look like as for, for families. But we don't have the answers to these questions. None of us do. And that causes some anxiety in each and every one of us. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went to the YMCA for the, probably the first time in months. My only goal was to break a sweat and get my heart rate up. And as soon as I walked in, the timing couldn't be any better. I saw a, a good friend, a, a retired pastor from the community say, Justin, come here. I, I want to talk to you. Just I have one quick question for you. How are you doing? That wasn't the quick question. But before I could even answer that one, he said, here's the, here's the question I want, I want to know. What's the church going to look like in 10 years? What's the church going to look like in light of the declining worship attendance through COVID where Worship attendance has either declined, plummeted, or become non-existent. What, what are the long-term ramifications of this and people's habits? And how is that going to play itself out in life of congregations, especially in, in small congregations? Justin, what are small churches going to be doing in 10 years from now? And at this point in time, all of a sudden, I realize I don't even need to get on a treadmill. I don't need to hop on a rowing machine. My, my, my heart's already racing. I've, I've already broken out in a sweat because... I don't know what the future holds. I wish I did. We all carry burdens. We all wish, like Joshua, we knew the answer to those questions of the future, but, but we don't. And last but not least, we all face rivers. Some are big, some are small, but in the face of these anxious times, even the smallest challenges, the smallest obstacles in our lives feel pretty big. 
We want to have strength. We want to have courage, but frankly, it's hard. And so what do we do? When we hear the words that are spoken to Joshua, we maybe just tell ourselves, well, Joshua's, he's Joshua. He's, he's better. He's stronger. He's more courageous than we are. He, he can hear those words and act upon them, but how in the world would we ever do that? Well, maybe. Maybe Joshua is more courageous, more stronger than we are. Maybe. Or, or maybe Joshua is exactly like us, which is why the first three chapters of the book of Joshua are so important, because Joshua actually does three things. Three things which give him strength, Three things which give him courage. Uh, the first is this. God says, Joshua, remember. It's as simple as that. Remember, Joshua. And he hearkens Joshua's memory and imagination back to the faithfulness of God. The God who parted the Red Sea. The God who led the Hebrew people out of Egypt. The God who has guided the Hebrew people through the wilderness. Remember, Joshua, how faithful I am. That's the first thing. If you want to be strong and courageous this day, remember Remember God's faithfulness to you. When's, when's the last time you, you took a di- break from your daily life and just gave thanks to God for, for creating you, for giving you the gift of life, for pausing to live in awe of the fact that God has forgiven you and promised you eternal life? Where we draw strength from is not first and foremost from ourselves, but it is turning to God and remembering the God who has created us and formed us and saved us is the same God who has promised to be with us. That's, that's primarily where our strength comes. Remember. It's the first thing Joshua does. Remember God's faithfulness. The second thing is, the, is, is my favorite because that says something more about my quirks than it does about Joshua. But Joshua forms a plan. For Joshua, it's, he sends spies ahead to the city of Jericho to check it out, to look for weaknesses. He he even has the people, uh, all the leaders of the tribes of Israel, talk about what the plan is going to be, and then he commit themselves to it. I love this. First, if you want to be strong, you want to be courageous, remember God's faithfulness. Second, form a plan. The the quirk about this is, in, in my household, I'm the one who always wants to have a plan. I'm the one who always has a list. In fact, when my kids have a problem, I usually say, what's your list? What's, what's your to-do list? As if that would solve all the problems of the world. I know it doesn't, but it does give us a sense of power. And the best book I probably read last year called The Power of Urgency, or The Power of Agency, uh, the authors, two mental health specialists, uh, talk about people who've overcome serious obstacles or challenges in their lives. Many of the people are dealing with mental health crises, but other people are overcoming different types of challenges. And they do all sorts of studies and recall all sorts of research, but the big thing that they come to, the big conclusion they draw from all this research is this, that people, this sounds trite, but people who believe they have power over their own circumstances, at least a portion of power, that they are more likely to be healthy or find fulfillment. It's, it's, it's that belief that if we have some power in our own lives, why that is important? Because I think there's a temptation to go through life wishing things were different. I wish I had more friends. I wish I was a healthier person. I wish I was more generous. I, I wish I practiced forgiveness. I wish, I wish, I wish. We can go through life like that, but, but people of God wishing for things doesn't get the Hebrew people across the Jordan River. They make a plan. They make a plan, and Joshua's plan is that they're going to face the challenges ahead of them. That's what we do. We, we, we make a plan, and, and in Joshua's case, they share that plan uh, publicly. All the leaders commit to it. It's, it's when we come up with a, a plan of how we're going to face our challenges, how God has given us the power to change some things in our lives that need to change. And then we share that plan with the people around us so they can encourage and support us and hold us accountable. We remember God's faithfulness. We, we make a plan. And finally comes the hard part. You see, doing those two things, it gets the Hebrew people to the Jordan River. But then they see it. They see the raging rapids and it's... It's a lot. And at some point, the Hebrew people, just like us, got to take that first step. Because there are some problems in this world you can't go over, you can't go around, you got to go through. And so slowly but surely, the Hebrew people 
put one foot in front of the other until finally a couple brave souls say, I'll go first. And they wade into the water. And a funny thing happens when they do. Suddenly, the raging waters of the Jordan River stop. That's what God does. As the Hebrew people step into the water, the waters stop. Pretty powerful, isn't it? And next thing you know, as the Hebrew people bring the Ark of the Covenant in, the presence of God, it gets even better. The water begins to part. Some of the Hebrew people walk across dry ground on the way into the Promised Land, and others, they wade across the water, the water that is no longer flowing. They're having the time of their life. People of God, this is what we do. To be strong, be courageous, remember. Remember the faithfulness of God to you, to you and to those around you. Second, make a plan. Make a plan for how you're going to take the steps you need to take to change whatever it is about your life or about your circumstances that you want to change. And last but not least, take that big step. Take that big step trusting that as you walk into the water that you are walking with God, the God who parts the Red Sea, the God who stills the water, the God who, who raises the dead. If you remember these things, if you remember that God is with you the entire time, then what else is there to do but to be strong and courageous? Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to, to the, the dead. dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. Peace be with you. With you, peace be with you. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found. If you've been able to worship with us in these last few months, you'll know the three ways that we have of giving. You can uh, text your dollar amount to give. You can send your check in right to the church, or you can go online and sign up for Simply Giving, and that's just an amazing, easy way to give. And we want to just thank you for your generosity. Because of the money you've been able to give, United has been able to continue to do impactful ministry around Red Wing, around uh, the area, around the world. We partner with some amazing organizations, one of them, Lutheran World Relief, well regarded around the world. And the cool thing I think about this organization is that long after other people have left, after the crisis is over and well-meaning people have gone home, after the news crews pack up, Lutheran World Relief remains. They are there to keep rebuilding. Oh, sorry, oh no worries. They remain to keep rebuilding, so we just want to say thank you for your generosity.
God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the animals, the flowers, and the trees, and the sun that rises and sets over them each day. Thank you for creating everything we see. Thank you for the life we live and for making each person different. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Dear God, you show compassion to those in need and relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Dear God, we pray for the nation and our leaders that they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.